Hey guys, we're going to do a super fun project today. It's based on a book I just read for our school called The Ant and the Elephant. Yes, I realize it's backwards, but it's written by Bill. It's illustrated and written by Bill Pete, who actually was a person that inspired me to draw. Um, when I was very, very little, I would check out all the books that he had in the library, and the librarian each week would say, are you sure you want to check those out? You check out the same books every week, and I'm like, Yes, it's, it, it was my lifeline of learning how to draw. <clears throat> so he actually was an illustrator for Walt Disney, and they had a little disagreement, well, actually a couple, and he ended up going out on his own and creating books so that I could draw. <laughs> Not really, but anyway, we're going to do a multimedia piece, um, and we're going to need some watercolor if you have some. You could use a uh, Crayola marker and wa add water to it if you like, or you could just use crayon, whatever you'd like. So you're going to need some brushes and some water, um, paper towel. Um, I have some animals to help me because throughout the story, uh, it's a story about an ant that eventually helps an elephant who happened to help all the other el animals that would not help the ant escape a very perilous situation he found himself in. So um, you're also going to need some sort of texture. So I got a ribbon and I got some leaves, me and my leaves, you guys know that, my leaves. Um, you could use the bags of onions, you could use whatever you would, really you'd like that you think would be neat for texture. You could do rubbings on trees, the bark, that'd be cool. You could do your floor, I'm looking down our floor, it's kind of textured. Um, and then you need some crayons, scissors, and glue eventually, okay? <clears throat> so the first thing you're gonna do is the story takes place over the course of a day and I thought it'd be super fun to kind of show time. And the way that you can do that is kind of change the color throughout the picture, okay? So it takes place in the beginning of the day and then it goes all the way to the nighttime. So I'm gonna dip my watercolor brush, um, this is a wash brush in, in the, the paint and I'm gonna start with the blue and I'm just gonna paint really, really fast a wash. And a wash is basically just a background color I'm not going to be concerned so much with um, getting it toward the bottom because I want to do uh, the forest floor by, <clears throat> um, I'm sorry, by with the, the rubbings that we have. Now you can also incorporate like an underwater scene. You could do this with lots of different ideas, but I'm just giving you one. Okay, now I'm going to kind of dip into the evening. In the evening, I'm just going to put my red right on my blue, and we know that red and blue make purple. They make purple. So I'm going to make my purple, and I'm actually going to add a purple because I think this is a really fun color here. It's kind of like a magenta. And I'm going to dip that in there a little bit more, and I'm going to just add some purple in there. So you can kind of see that we're having our day a little bit more purple. And then, my purple doesn't want to go on there. And then what we're going to do is eventually add black, which is our, our nighttime. And I'm going to use that very sparingly because it's such a heavy color to me. It's just, it's so dark. So I'm going to do that. Alrighty. So there is my day, course of a day. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that off to the side and I'm going to get some just regular computer paper, okay? And like this, and I'm going to do some rubbings, okay? So I'm going to turn this over, and I would use multiple um, multiple crayons. Um, so I'm going to actually do a purple, because in the evening, uh, we, uh, everything changes, right? Because the light is being filtered through the dust in the air and the, the pollen in the air. I'm sure you guys all know about the pollen. Um, and so it's called atmospheric prep or atmospheric um, perspective. I almost forgot the word. And what that means is how we see things based on the different lights. Um, I'm sure you've, if you've been to a city, you might have seen the smog. That changes the way that we see things. It could be really hazy or fuzzy um, on a really humid day here in Florida. Oh my goodness, it, everything gets really, really hazy and you could almost see the moisture in the air, okay? So um, we're gonna go ahead and do this and I'd like to do the dark colors because in the evening time, everything seems to have like a, a darker hue, a darker color, okay? Um, I purposely peeled the crayon, it takes a while because 
um, you just have to be persistent. You just have to stick with it. Um, now, do we throw our pieces of paper on the floor? No, we don't. <laughs> if you are in my class, why don't we do that? Because it's littering. I know someone out there in video land said that it's littering. It's littering. Okay, so we don't want to do that. We're going to, my mom taught me this when I was little. You're going to take your hand and scoop it into your hand and cover it up so when you walk it doesn't go anywhere and you're going to throw it into um, the trash can. Okay, we don't want to just throw it on the floor. Okay, so here's our leaf and we're going to just rub, 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 rub. And so we have some darker leaves. Um, you know, I probably should do even like, let's see if we can get another leaf here. It'll do some blue. Now, I, I did peel some crayons before, so I'm going to just show you. I'm going to do some dark, dark um, blue. I'm going to move that over. Let me do it again. I think I might peel a black. Let's see what color this is. This is like a turquoise. Yeah, blue, green turquoise. I'm going to go ahead and peel that one. Um, and then in the story, I told you that there was an ant and there's a turtle. A, they call it a mud turtle. There's a, a great hornbill who's a lady. She's got her egg up in her nest and her egg falls down. And then there's a giraffe who is kind of a little snotty. He's a little bit grumpy. Um, maybe he's just having a bad day. You know, that happens to us all, doesn't it? And um, I know me, maybe you are always happy. There's, there's some people like that, but sometimes I get in a bad mood and it's okay. You just try not to take it out on people, right? Yeah. So we're gonna peel our crayon, peel, peel, peel. And I would probably do a black one too, because remember evening, everything looks really, it's like dark shadows and stuff, okay. So now I have a beautiful turquoise. Oh, that kind of looks like the same color, doesn't it? Well, that's okay. No, nope, it's not. Okay, then I'm going to take this, this leaf, and put it down there, and do that leaf. Okay, and on and on. Okay, and then eventually we're going to cut these out, and we're going to make them, you can make a tree, you can make um, the bottom of the forest floor, you can make a bush, you can do it however you want. Okay, then finally what we're going to do is we're going to create um, some animals. Now, these are some animals in the story. There's even a rhino. Now, these aren't obviously to scale because rhinos are, are pretty big. So we're going to do some observational drawing. And what you do with that, you could do this anywhere you want. You could just get a piece of paper. And at school, we call this a thinking pen. And I use a pen with my kids because when you slow down and you don't have an eraser, um, it makes you really consider what it is that you're looking at and what you're drawing. You know, it makes you look at it and then look at your paper and try to match what you're seeing with what you're drawing. And it is a skill. It takes a lifetime to learn. I, it took me, I still do it. And I still look at it and go, wow, some of them I mess up and you know, you just keep practicing. So I'm going to draw, I'm gonna start with his ears. I'm gonna show you my character first, okay? I'm gonna start with his ears and I'm gonna move down his, um, both his horns and then go down around his lip and then his feet. It's kind of like outlining it. So I'm gonna do that with this guy and then I'll show you what I'm doing. So I'm gonna start with his ears and he's pretty big. So his ears like this. And um, I was talking the other day, does anyone know who named the animals? Who named all these, like who thought of the name rhinoceros? Like <laughs> that's a weird name when you think about it. It's kind of actually weird to say. Does anyone know? I'm sure you guys do. Um, yeah, it was Adam. Adam named the animals. That was his first job. His first job was, God's like, Adam, I would really like it for you to name these animals. And so he did. Now rhinoceroses are a very interesting animal they are big and they um, are very, very strong. And they have lots of folds. They call that the armor. So see if you can get even the texture of the animal. Because they're not flat, are they? They definitely have um, a lot going on there. 
and if you could draw the other foot on the other side of him, that would be good because they are four legged. So they have four, four legs and we don't want to forget his little eyeball. He's got a tiny little eye. There we go. So there's my, my rhinoceros. Not the best, but that's okay. All right, and then we're gonna color these in. We're gonna, we're gonna cut out our leaves that we just did our textures with, or you might've used an onion bag or an avocado bag, or you found some cool ribbon. We're gonna cut those out and we're gonna glue those down. Then we're gonna color in our animals and we're gonna cut those out. And there goes my refrigerator, you guys hear that? Um, I was talking with Nick the other day who works at our school. He's like brilliant with film and stuff. And he's like, hey, you should get a microphone. So I'm gonna heed his advice because he's super smart and he's super good at what he does. And it's smart to listen to people that are smarter than you. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take Nick's advice and get a, a microphone so that you guys don't have to hear all this wonderful background noise. Um, and then we're gonna glue it all on there. Now I'm not gonna do that um, with you because I just want you to work on your project, but I am gonna post the end result so that you can, guys can see what we did. Okay, and don't forget, you have to post yours because I love seeing your projects. A lot of you guys are sending them in and I just totally love them. Don't forget, I have a new YouTube channel. It's Mrs. Neal's Art Class. I'm gonna be ending the other one, so just get off of that one because there's 40 subscribers there, but you're all gonna go away. So go over to my new one. It's the picture is me with these cool glasses that I was trying on in a store with my husband. We were just goofing around. And I thought those were fun. You could even see the little tag. <laughs> um, or you can go to my Facebook page, Miss Neal's Art Class, or you can send them to me. Um, if you're at my school, you can email them to me. I also have a, an email account, and guess what? It's Mrs. Neal's Art Class at gmail.com. If you want to send them to me there, I would love to see them. All right, you guys, take care of each other and yourselves. And I will see you in a bit when I show you my project. All right, take care.